The Outer World Spacer's Choice Edition. Want to go back to this one for two reasons. Number one, this was one of the biggest slam dunks we saw during this generation where, oh, it's the Outer World, great RPG, great DLC to follow it up, put it in a package, ship it, boom, you're good to go, you got the Definitive Edition. Uh, it lived up to its name with Spacer's Choice. It was not good at all, as I indicated in my review. How disappointed I was in how they messed up the visuals as they messed up the performance. It just was a far worse game, and you were better off buying the original and the DLC piecemeal. Since then, there's been four patches, and I wanted to try this one out and see if it's been fixed, so you don't have to. At the same time, though, after Starfield came out, a lot of people were saying, man, I wish we had this sort of space RPG with less planets, more meaningful exploration. And I couldn't help but think of one single RPG that did that phenomenally, and that's The Outer Worlds. As time has gone on, I've noticed a lot of people have soured on The Outer Worlds. It's not as good as we thought it was at launch. There was a lot of hype driving it. I have always been, and still am, a lover of this game. I love the choices, I love the humor, I love its characters, I find it all memorable. So I wanted to go back to it. I thought it'd be a fun little break from the usual Mr. Maddie Candor. So, let's check out Outer World Spacer's Choice Edition. And uh, I said it was gonna be fun, but let's hope it works, because when I went to Steam and checked out the user reviews, some had a great time and said, surprisingly, great performance. Some were still having a bad time. So we're gonna see in a two-for-one kind of special here. So. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're new here, you're into these kind of random playthrough videos, you're in the right place. Consider subscribing. Okay, let's see what we were doing here last time. We had uh, Vicar Max's companion quest. We had a couple side quests. We were a little bit into uh, the Edgewater main quest line. You know, immediately playing this game, the first thing I can think of, and I hope the Outer Worlds 2 has this, is a third-person mode. So far, performance doing pretty good. I remember when I was playing this on this same PC, by the way, which has a 3080 in it. Uh, it was skipping all over the place, not doing too hot. But uh, here we go. Let's let's see how things are handled in combat. I also remember the uh, the AI was worse than this. Oh man! All right, so far so good. Yeah, that's one thing I hope that they do a little bit better in the in the Outer Worlds too, uh, or just Obsidian games in general. Uh, combat needs to be like just mildly more challenging. It's it's a really easy game, and I know they kind of pack some of the difficulty into, like, the alternate, like, the Supernova uh, difficulty. I, I know that's, like, an alternative there, but when I say difficulty, I mean, like, just enemies not running at you and dying so instantaneously would be, I think, a pretty good start. Oh, man. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Am I going to eat my words on the challenge here so quick? Oh, yeah, they got their own version of Vats which I always liked. I think it's good for people who aren't great first-person shooters but like RPGs. Oh boy, I'm out of ammo, hold on now. Can I just say I love Edgewater as a location? Like the way they capture through the environmental art, like the, the very corporate nature of this world, while also showing how like rustic and run down it is, the flickering lights as an example, of course the debris in the streets, like, it makes a lot of money here, but they do the bare minimum because, again, of the corporate structure that we know and love in the Outer Worlds. Like, I just appreciate the way they designed this town visually so much. Uh, the eyes are still a little, like, everything in the Outer Worlds is almost this pastel sort of visual style. And then the eyes, like, creepy, reflective. It's like, if you don't care about that stuff, I guess it wouldn't matter if it's performing well. But it's such a distraction to me. Like, why are your eyes... So well, shiny. Wait, hold on. I think this line is hilarious. Hold on. Wait. What the fuck is this? Is this <laughs> French? I can't fucking read French. <laughs> it's a law forsaken joke is what it is. Oh, man. See, that's what I'm talking about. I think this game's still so funny. <laughs> I remember when I was reviewing the game and I got to that line. I think I had the same exact reaction. I just burst out laughing. The eyes look so... I shall see you on the Odd. It, it's just way, way, to way too reflective. Now. Like, they look okay in the overworld. Like, if you look at Parvati, when you're just looking quickly, like, you're not going to stop and really analyze that hardcore. So I think it matters less there. But when you get up close, which is the dialogue, that's where it, it looks definitely a little funky. One of the other reasons I forgot to mention at the top of the video that I, I wanted to go back to the Outer Worlds is I've been thinking a lot about Avowed. And uh, obviously, I think that it's going to be a big part of our coverage in 2024, where undoubtedly we'll we'll see more gameplay. And I was thinking to myself that, you know what, like, this game is probably going to be, I think Avowed is going to be pretty much like, 
fantasy the outer worlds at least on a design level holy smokes that is a big behemoth just challenging me right there um uh, and so i was thinking you know i want to like reconnect with this kind of design i don't know if everyone agrees with it maybe i'm behind on the times uh, but for me i've always been a bigger fan of the style of design that the outer worlds and games like it uh pursue um i prefer that focus on like tight interesting hub areas with unique characters to meet and fun quests to do and then you go on to the next hub i i never really i love open worlds of course i'm a, a bgs fan uh, but i i've realized as time has gone on I, I like a particular type of open world like it's not a guarantee that i'm gonna like an open world like you either need to have very special combat i think of like the shadow of war series where you have this uh very bloody arkham free flow style combat that goes a long way with me because like your game's fun to play your style like a ubisoft game but you are fun to play so that could go along with me or it's like the intimate exploration which i think bgs does you know so well it's like oh i can you know pick up everything and i can talk to anyone um and then the outer worlds captures that same freedom obviously on a smaller scale uh, but you get more i think at least meaningful choice out of it so yeah like i was thinking of the um the the about i said the avowed i was thinking of avowed and was, you know it, it just made me kind of want to get back into this game because who knows when we're going to get our hands on avowed it, it could be a little while they said it was pre-alpha when we first saw it back when um so it is possible that maybe uh this takes into 2025 i would just selfishly hope not but uh, xbox looks like they have a, a lot of exciting stuff in the can where i could totally see them just letting avowed be delayed just so that they can you know have other stuff in their pipeline like hellblade 2 towerborn all that stuff come out uh oh parvati's down uh oh uh oh oh i take it back this game is a challenge that or i'm just my skills are, are beginning to atrophy before your very eyes pithicophobia <laughs> after repeatedly getting beat up by primals you longer function well when they attack your companions so i get a perk point yeah i, I love this about this game i don't know if Hmm. Hmm. Like it's it's sometimes such a hard trade-off to accept, but that's like where the fun of the playthrough is. I highly recommend if I'm gonna reject it. I highly recommend if you have not done an idiot playthrough in the outer worlds, you seriously should. It is the ending is incredible. Uh, that or if you've played the game multiple times and you just want to check it out, like look up the ending. It is it is so worthwhile. <laughs> I hope they change how skill points are allocated because they put them into little groups here and they all scale with you as a collective until you get one of them to 50 and then you can individually level them up see um for me though like i i like when you just have to pick a, a sea of individual skills because what happens is the game quietly makes you a jack of all trades and master of them too uh, especially when you're wearing like gear you can see here that we got like 30 technically 30 as well 28 uh just based off what we're wearing what we have equipped uh, so it can make you better than you you actually are and so you can get to that point of scaling up individually a little easier um where again i i think the strength of like an obsidian rpg is being really good at a couple of specific things uh rather than great at everything and so yeah you can even level up your companions which i thought was pretty cool here she can do 10 engineering threat generated uh and health we'll do the 10 engineering when she's in the party because i i always got parvati in the squad best companion to have with you she is awesome oh my god holy smokes hold on now whoa 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 whoa! i take it back it's a hard game i take well that ended horribly okay i've not used a shock weapon like this but this is pretty good okay big fan big fan forgot how fallout this game is man just like even reading the the files in terminals i always loved having that in these games so i know some people saw it as unoriginal but i was like oh nice i love that in the other games <laughs> forgot to mention this when i was in here i'm also a sucker for the lived in world detail like we see the dead receptionist here we see the blood splatter on the wall uh, you, you you can like kind of put together in your head what happened here and again it just it lights the bgs level fire me who loves the environmental storytelling what can i say but yeah in the terms of performance so far so good no go. hitches at all in both the open world and interiors uh, the worst i saw was a little ui bug which like the a button was miss or the x button was missing when i was um 
when I was trying to enter a store menu. I just, you know, the button still worked, but it, it was just not there. I, I can live with that, but, you know, that that was really it. And so, so far, I mean, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm impressed that it's actually uh, fixed as well as it is. And honestly, that's great because uh, the Outer Worlds, let me say it now, uh, Murder on Iridanos, you know, Peril and Gorgon's not bad, but Murder on Iridanos is some of the best DLC you can play in our industry. I'm talking, oh, like, my favorite DLC of all time probably goes to Burial at Sea for Bioshock Infinite. And let me tell you that Murder on Iridanos is probably the best DLC I've played since then. Um, it is really good. I mean, it, it adds, like, a whole other 10, 15 hours to the Outer Worlds, and um, I think you'll walk away quite pleased. I've not heard anyone say anything negative about that, uh, although the internet can surprise you from time to time. I found nothing to be super critical about. Murder on Eridanos, just to me, was such a delight every step of the way, and um, especially taking that kind of, of course, corporate storytelling that we, that we know and love from the Outer Worlds, and kind of making it more dark, uh, which definitely wasn't in the base game, uh, one of people's complaints. Yeah, they they flipped that on its head a little bit. So just a heads up in case you're thinking about picking up the DLC. Uh, well worth it. We have individual reviews for that uh, here on the channel. Ooh, little skill check. Don't mind if I do. Skill checks in the opening part of the game were really low. I remember doing, like, comparison videos on it. Um, you, like, borderline can't fail them, uh, which is something I was always a little bit critical of with this game. Is like, yeah, there's skill checking and it feels good but it's not like the authentic skill check so to say it kind of feeds you the illusion of choice oh a couple frame drops there hold on i know we're about to make a decision here where we choose where the power goes i remember there's this wild choice you can make here where you can actually like lead the robots to edgewater and it's like a fourth option no and it's 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 pretty hilarious excuse me ma'am Look, I know you want your power. See, Providey's eyes look totally fine here. You, so they, it's it's something with like Vicar's eyes. To... We're going to destroy Edgewater here and uh, redirect the power that way. It always bugged me I couldn't go to that volcano. Like it, it's walled off by like a sea of lava. And then I think to myself, why is there, why is is there a whole civilization right next to a sea of lava and a volcano? I I don't know, but like. I just, oh, like, that's where the limitations of the Outer Worlds would bug me a little bit, is, is seeing these beautiful things in the distance, or these marked locations that don't have much within them. Um, I think that's where the game, both uh, the Outer Worlds 2 and Avowed, could stand to improve a bit. Like, I don't know. Again, maybe I'm asking too much. I just think uh, every location should still tell a story. Just having a transport wreckage like we passed, like, that's, it's just a loot location. That's not, that's not fun. That's not fun for the player. I, what is fun are these loading screens. I'm, I'm not even saying that, like, ironically. That is, I, I love the little art that we get to see, the propaganda. Uh, it goes a long way with me. Anyway, yeah, now we can see Edgewater quite displeased with what's happened here. Life is full of betrayals. I'm just the most recent one. <laughs> that may be the most honest thing you have said to me. Space's choice will shut us down before long. Some of us will die of illness. See, this is the one thing where I think Some Outer Worlds' choices may lack some punch. It's like, I don't sympathize for Spacer's choice. <laughs> I don't sympathize for them at all. So there's no real emotional punch when you see the consequence, which I, I get when people complain about that. And if you ever need a pair of eyes, watch... I, the fact that you can tell Parvati to just go away is crazy to me. Like, why would you ever do it? I, I don't know, but the fact that you can is nuts. Captain... I have detected that the town of Edgewater is now without power. I appreciate you doing your part to hasten. <laughs> That's cold-hearted, man. Ada, you don't got to do that. Come on now. And here we go to the navigation terminal. This is where you can access the uh, the DLC as well as all these other planets. I remember thinking they were going to make every single planet in the game explorable. You can see Iridanos is, is up here. You unlock that later in the story. I think you have to be level 25? 20? Or no, maybe it moves up the cap to that. I don't know. You gotta be a certain level, though. Um, I think Typhon is the one. Yeah, uninhabitable icy planetoid. It's kind of just there. I think it was like a planned planet that got cut. Um, but yeah, it's... I, I just love how they, they got it all laid out. So then you can go to the Groundbreaker and just pick where you want to go. Nice 
tight, small solar system like it seems everyone on the internet enjoys nowadays. So yeah, it was fun to go back to the Outer Worlds for this video. I, I absolutely adore this game still. They've definitely improved the Spacer's Choice Edition. I am impressed uh, that that was actually the case. As I say that, as I notice, I'm holding a floating handle to my gun. <laughs> I don't know. Is that a is that a glitch? Like, come on, let me swap that back out. Let's. I don't know if it's supposed to be like that. Well, it's not perfect, but it's much better than where it was at launch visually, as well as performance wise. At least on my PC. Let me do a heat check here. Yeah, even heat wise, like my computer is not running that hot from it. It's not perfect, but if you're looking for the all-in-one package, this seems. Like, you could maybe roll the dice on a pretty cheap sale. Uh, but it was fun to go back down the lesson of post-Starfield World see, like, what I like about this versus that. So, I hope you enjoyed. I'm looking forward to seeing your thoughts down below. Fire away. And with that, take excellent care of yourselves. This character, by the way, one of the biggest letdowns. I, I, I love a lot of characters in the Outer Worlds, but Sam was, like, this letdown of what HK should have been. Anyway, stay sexy. Stay active. I love you all. Peace.